if i have one more for loop inside the for loop so then i will call this as nested for loop if you want to skip the entire block or a loop you will use break if you want to skip the iteration so you will use continue sign is a predefined function which will help me to calculate the sign value hello everyone i welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in this session i will be showing a different types of jumps skipping and a lot of labels what does that are you speaking so yes my dear students it's going to be very very important topic which i'm going to discuss with all of you in this session so what does that it's time for all of us to check that so guys i will be showing you the nested loop so we have discussed the concepts called loops in the previous session so the continuation of that topic is all about the nested loop along with that i will also discuss different types of jump statements how do i skip some particular iteration or a block of loop is what i will be discussing with these two topics and also i will introduce some of the math functions in this session with all of you so without wasting much of your time let me get into the session so guys so this is what i will call it as a nested loop what exactly i will call it as a nested loop a loop inside the loop for example here i have taken the for loop so i have taken so first i have taken the for loop here observe here i have the keyword and i have three different parts of the for loop so what are the three different parts of the for loop that i have obviously i have the initialization condition and the uh, increment or decrement operator so fine i have given that so according to the syntax what we have discussed in my previous session your for loop syntax should be like this for so i is equal to 0 i is less than or equal to 5 let's imagine like that i plus plus so this is the parenthesis that i have then open flower bracket close flower bracket so guys so this is the syntax but what i'm doing here is so within this parenthesis i will write my statements so in case if i have one more for loop inside the for loop so then i will call this as nested for loop so that's what you need to remember at this point of time so fine imagine here i have a for loop so it's going to be very very interesting and you need to remember this suppose if i have a for loop like this okay i is equal to 1 i is less than or equal to 3 and i plus plus okay so fine again i have for i is equal to uh, let me just j let me take it as j since i have taken already i so let me just take it as 1 and i uh, let me take it as j again less than or equal to 2 okay j plus plus uh let me just print something here print hi can you just tell me how many number of times hi will be printed so can you just tell me in anybody yes sir if it is a live class we would have told you so we know the answer yes guys how many times it will execute so imagine so when i'm executing the first iteration when i is one this will be executed two times okay so two times i have executed hi and hi is printed so fine i is incremented now so fine so now i is 2 i is 2 so now again i will come here so i will i will execute this for two times so fine done i have executed so then after that again i i will increment the i so i will become 3 so fine i will check the condition yes condition is true so i will come inside so guys i will execute this two times so totally six times i will execute so perform the multiplication between these two Three to the six, six times I will execute. This is how the nested loop is working for all of you. All right, going forward to the next topic. So hope you have the clear idea how exactly this nested loop is working. The next one is jumps in the loops. When I'm discussing this jumps in the loop, it is not necessary that I have to execute all the statements that I have in the loop. I can also skip some part of the loop. How do I skip? So skipping the part of a loop, uh, we will be doing it with the help of two things. so let me just discuss that in detail so guys especially i will be using break and also i will be using continue so what exactly this break and what exactly this continue is doing for me that's what you need to remember so let me take an example to explain this concept so instead of reading all this content for all of you it's very simple imagine i have a book okay so book is made up of sheets so this is what you need to remember i have a 
book and book is a book is made up of sheets book has got different number of sheets so now if i want to skip the book i will be using the break remember this if i want to skip the book i will be using the break if i want to skip any sheets i will be using the continue what is the meaning of it sir if you want to skip the entire block or a loop you will use break if you want to skip the iteration so you will use continue in the sense in a loop or a loop is a combination of different number of iteration if you want to skip any one iteration or any iteration you will use continue and you will be in the same loop but if you want to come out of the loop you will use break that's a two important thing that you need to remember with respect to the break and continue so fine moving forward to the next one i think i have already explained this so next one is labeled jump what is the meaning of labeled jump so you will have a identifier okay you will have a identifier say for example let me just take one variable name say for example l1 okay that is label 1 if i use a keyword called go to suppose if i use a keyword called go to okay so go to l1 with the colon okay so from there the execution starts so you are redirecting the execution of the statements according to the label one for example imagine how exactly it is working imagine i have a set of lines okay i have a set of lines here i will mention go to l1 okay go to l1 so here i have given l1 so go to l1 whenever the compiler is executing this statement the control from here again it goes back to the l1 and it starts its execution from here this is how i am redirecting the control of the compiler to the desired position with the help of the label so that is what i will call it as a go to label which you have already studied in the c so this is what i wanted to discuss with all of you and the last topic for the day that i have is a math function we all know that we have some predefined functions especially when it comes to the math function which i have already listed some math function for all of you so why do we use this function so before uh we understand this functions you need to understand whenever i write like this you should treat this as a function so guys whenever you come across with this kind of parenthesis you should treat that as a function so can i say this as a function yes sir it's a predefined function so sin is a predefined function which will help me to calculate the sin value in the same way cos and also i will be able to calculate the square root by using this function that is sqrt and i will also be able to calculate the power of a given number so with the help of this function if you want to find the maximum number of two numbers you will be able to use this max in the last one sign of the given number you will be able to identify with the help of this function so not only this much i have very you know few functions which i have listed on my screen so we have a number of a uh, lot of lot of predefined functions in the math library i want all of you to please explore all the different types of you know math function we have floor seal a lot of things are there in fact so i want you all to please explore that by saying this we have come to an end of the session so happy learning so stay safe stay healthy thank you